It is time to play some NHL over or under. If you're a newer subscriber to the channel or you just haven't seen one of these videos before, it's a pretty simple concept. Basically, I ask you guys to give me a player name, a goal total or a point total, or in a goalie's case, a save percentage. And then I pick out some of the comments and try and predict if that player will have over or under the given total for this upcoming season. I know next season is still a ways away. We aren't even done with the Stanley Cup Finals just yet, but I was really in the mood to do one of these and this leaves me space to do maybe a couple more of these throughout the off season as well. The first comment of the video comes from Jacob, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, I apologize, but the comment is Dylan Larkin, 65 points. Unfortunately, I am going to have to take the under on this one, Larkin's point production over the past couple of seasons has been pretty disappointing for his standards, and you have to take into account the low event, boring style of hockey that Jeff Blashill has the Red Wings playing, there's usually not much offense whatsoever, so honestly I would be surprised if anybody on Detroit can break the 65 point mark next season. I hope I'm wrong though. The next comment comes from Haymaker and this is actually a team one, Sabres without Eichel over under 60 points. That's a very low point total, basically would be banking on them being the worst team in the NHL next season, which wouldn't be surprising. I mean, it is the Buffalo Sabres we're talking about here, but hockey is very weird. Like we saw it happen with the Islanders. They couldn't build a contender around John Tavares basically for his entire career. And then when he leaves, they become a perennial playoff team. They've now made it to back to back conference finals. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen with the Buffalo Sabres, but I could see a scenario where they don't have a completely awful season after trading Eichel. So I'm going to go ahead and take the over of 60 points. Just don't be a complete dumpster fire next year, Buffalo. The next comment comes from Tripe or Trippy, who says Victor Arvidsson, 30 goals. So the newest member of the Los Angeles Kings. I'm going to take the over on this one. I'm a big fan of Victor Arvidsson. I talked about him in the video I made going over the Arvidsson to Los Angeles trade. Sure, the past couple of seasons, Seasons, he hasn't produced all that well, but the three seasons prior to those two, he was a perennial 30 goal scorer. He even had a season in there where he finished top three in goals per game. Arvidsson can really score. I think a change of scenery is going to do wonders for him, so give me the over on this one. This next comment comes from Eliminator, who says Cole Caulfield over under 30 goals. I'm pretty sure in the video I made on Cole Caulfield a week or so ago, I said that I wouldn't be surprised if he does score 30 goals next season, and that is still true. It wouldn't surprise me with the skill set that Caulfield has. That being said though, I am going to take the under on this one. When it comes to young players and rookies, I like to keep my expectations relatively low. I feel like if you don't, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Like all the people that expected Lafreniere to have some ridiculous, you know, McDavid-like rookie season this past season were left pretty disappointed. Just don't expect teenagers, 20-year-old players to come in and be world beaters. It's very cool to see when it happens, but it doesn't happen more often than it does. So again, I'm taking the under here, but I do think 30 is a achievable for the type of player that Caulfield is. Moving on now, this comment comes from HabsFan3197, Seattle top 16 in the league. So basically over under on them making the playoffs and I'm for sure taking the under on this one. I know a lot of people are expecting them to have a pretty good season because the last time we saw an expansion team come into the league, they made it to the Stanley Cup finals in their first season, but that is not going to happen again with Seattle. I think GMs are going to be a lot more careful this time around when it comes to who they protect and making trades so that Seattle doesn't take a certain player and that kind of thing. I certainly don't expect them to be completely awful. My expectation is that they finish somewhere in like the 25 to 20 range, maybe a little bit higher than that, but I don't think they're going to be top 16, so I'm taking the under. Next up, we have a comment from Josh who says, Line A, 40 points. I think he will. New coach, Torts gone. Hopefully, CBJ adds a center. I am 100% taking the over on this one without even thinking about it too much. I mean, last season was the only year of Line A's career. He had under 40 points and he only played 46 games. 40 goals in a single season is very achievable for a player like Linus, so I would be extremely shocked if he doesn't at least get 40 points. And like you said, they're going to have a new coach. It's no secret that Line didn't mesh well with John Tortorella. This past season was an outlier for Patrick Line. I think he's going to be just fine. Next up from Brendan, Alex Tuck, 35 goals. If only he could finish on the 10 breakaways he gets per game. This is true. It seems like Alex Tuck is good for at least one breakaway per game. I'm going to take the under here. I think Alex Tuck has the tools to maybe have a 35 goal season, but my reasoning for taking the under is just where he plays in the Vegas Golden Knights lineup. When that team is fully healthy, Alex Tuck is usually on the third line. The wingers on the top line are always going to be Stone and Pacioretty, and then on the second line, it's usually Marcheseau and Riley Smith. So I feel like it would be pretty difficult for Alex Tuck to have a 35 plus goal season when, for the most part, on the Vegas Golden Knights, he's a third liner. Maybe I would have a different answer if he was on a different team or if he played higher in the lineup. From Jordan Rosen, Capo 
Capo Caco 50 points. This is a pretty interesting one. The first two seasons of Capo Caco's NHL career, the offensive numbers have definitely been underwhelming. He's only got a total of 40 points through his first 114 NHL games. However, that being said, this past season, compared to his rookie season, he vastly improved as a player. As a rookie, there were often times where he looked like a liability out there, but this past season, that was definitely not the case. Sure, the offensive numbers probably aren't where you want them to be for a second overall pick, but it's a good sign that he improved. And now that Kako has worked on his overall game and he's a much better complete player, I think we're going to see the points start to come. I also think that Gerard Gallant being the new head coach of the Rangers is going to be a big help for players like Kako and like Lafreniere. I don't think David Quinn was the right coach for those type of players. I'm getting off track here. I just got to answer the question though. 50 points. I am going to take the under. I feel like with Kako, it's going to be more of a gradual improvement in his points. Like maybe this upcoming season, we'll see him in the 35 to 40 point range. And then the following season is where we can see him maybe break out and be like a 50, 60 point guy. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. Next up, this comment comes from Brader who says, Kale McCarr, 65 points over or under. In my opinion, this is way, way, way too low. I'm smashing the over on this one. I think at least for the next seven, eight years, Kale McCarr is going to be year in and year out around a point a game defenseman. He's that good. He's a game breaking talent. Probably getting a little bit too ahead of myself here, but do you guys think we could maybe see Kale McCarr push the 100 point mark in a single season? I know we haven't seen that happen in like forever. I'm pretty sure the last time was like Al McInnes or Paul Coffey or somebody like that, but it does really feel like Kale McCarr is that good offensively that he could potentially do that. Continuing on, now this comment comes from Christian Hallbrook who says, Andre Vasilevsky over under a 925 save percentage. That is a very high number. Believe it or not, Vasilevsky has actually never finished a season with above a 925 save percentage. He has had exactly a 925 twice, but never above. So with that information, I am going to take the under. I mean, that's just a really high number. And while Vasilevsky is probably the best goal goaltender in the world for a guy who plays as many games as he does like he doesn't get a lot of nights off even in the regular season I think it's a safe bet to say he'll probably finish with a below 925 save percentage but not by much like if your question was a 920 save percentage over or under I'd probably take the over on that one from Frank Yederson another goalie one here Carter Hart over under a 910 save percentage it's no secret that Carter Hart really really struggled this past season might have been the worst goalie in the league that played on a regular basis I'll take the blame for that I I think I probably jinxed him when I predicted him to win the Vesna Trophy before the season started. That all being said though, we know Carter Hart is much, much better than the way he played this past season. I'm going to take the over on this one. I think he's going to bounce back. And when you look at the recent history of the Philadelphia Flyers, they have one good year, one bad year, one good year, one bad year, and they just keep going back and forth. So considering this past season was a bad year for the team, I think the Flyers as a team bounces back this upcoming season. And if that happens, that should make things a lot easier on Carter Hart. And I think a 9 10 or above save percentage should be very achievable. Next up from Jacob Sivden, Toronto Maple Leafs over under three and a half playoff wins. So basically, are they going to win a playoff series or not? I'm going to go ahead and take the over. I mean, they just have to win a playoff series eventually, right? And I said that they had to win one heading into their playoff series against Montreal, and we know how that turned out. But the core of the Toronto Maple Leafs has to be on a very short leash right now. You got to think that if they can't get it done this upcoming season, then it's time to break up the band. I think they get it done, though. That team is just too talented to not win a round. We're talking about a round here. We're not talking about the Stanley Cup or the second round, just one round. Next up, we have another one surrounding the Toronto Maple Leafs. This one comes from Daniel or Danielle. Nick Robertson over under 30 points. I'm taking the over on this one for sure. At this point, based off of everything we've heard since their season ended, it seems like it's a given that the Toronto Maple Leafs are losing Zach Hyman. And instead of going out and making a trade or signing a winger in free agency to replace Hyman in the top six, I think it would be in the Leafs' best interest to just do it internally and promote Nick Robertson. So that's kind of what I think is going to happen. And if I'm right, I think Robertson easily breaks 30 points if he's playing with, you know, Nylander or Tavares or even Matthews and Marner. I think it'd be hard not to score 30 with those guys, especially when you have the skill set Robertson does. Moving along now, this comment comes from Juan Jose, who says Sam Bennett over under 50 points. This is a difficult one. I mean, his career high in points is 36, and he did that as a rookie. His next highest point total in a season since then was this past season, 27 and he did that one other time as well. So you would think 50 points is kind of a long shot, but seeing what he did after being traded to the Panthers, it really doesn't feel like that. He had 15 points in 10 regular season games in Florida. He also had five points in five playoff games. He fit in perfectly. Now, I certainly don't think him being, you know, over a point per game is sustainable. I think we're going to see a bit of a drop off, but I am going to take the over on 50 points because we're most likely going to see Sam Bennett start next season on a line with either 
Alexander Barkov or Jonathan Huberto or maybe even both. I mean, he certainly showed that he can keep up with those guys and produce on a line with those caliber of players, so I mean, why wouldn't Florida go back to it? And now for the final one of the video, this one comes from JonahCraft7, Milan Lucic, 10 goals over or under. Screw it, give me the over. I mean, we saw Lucic score 10 goals this past season in just a 56 game season, so next year, hopefully with it being 82 games, he can do it again. Lucic has really fit in well in Calgary since being swapped for James Neal. I think if he can stay healthy, you know, play 70 plus games, it's not far fetched to say he bangs in 10 goals. So that is going to do it for today's NHL over or under. Be sure to get down there in the comment section down below and play along with me. Let me know your picks for all the players and totals that we talked about in today's video. Huge thank you to everybody who went and participated in this and left a comment on the post. I really wish I could feature them all, but I think on this post, we set like a record for the most comments I've ever had on a community tab post. So I really appreciate all you guys. And if you guys want to see some more NHL over or unders throughout the off season before next season starts, then just be sure to show this video some love, leave it a like, and I'll be sure to do some more.